Well, joining us now on Sector Watch for a closer look at property stocks across the region is Peter Churchhouse. He is Managing Director at Morgan Stanley Asia and joins us from our studios in Hong Kong. Peter, good day, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us. Now, uh, the markets I think people look uh, most uh, closely at, or uh, most keenly watched, I guess, Hong Kong, Singapore, as well as Bangkok. Quickly, uh, sum up the state of play in each of these markets. Well, property, of course, is the classic cyclical industry in the world over. And uh, what we've got to look at here is where the various property sectors in each country are in the respective cycles. And we see very different uh, positions in these cycles between residential and commercial, uh, between Hong Kong, Singapore, and Thailand. So the investor has to be very careful of uh, where, the, where the point in the cycle is at, at the particular time. Hmm. Okay, how are things looking uh, in Hong Kong? We're seeing, I uh, understand, residential uh, picking up quite nicely. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, both residential and commercial, we think, are pretty, um, pretty much at the bottom of the cycle. Uh, residential property prices have picked up very sharply this year by between 5 and 15 percent, depending on what sort of development you're looking at. Uh, and I think ahead of higher over the next 12 months or so, we're suggesting that perhaps prices will put on another uh, 15 percent in the next 12 months. Commercial property is very much at the bottom of the cycle. Property prices in the office market, for example, uh, have fallen since mid-94 by anything from 35 to 50 percent. We think they're very clearly at the bottom. We're not sure we're seeing an uptick yet, but probably think that is likely to come uh, in the first half of 1997. Mm, okay, now you sound pretty bullish uh, on the uh, residential sector. Is that uh, already taking into account uh, any possible U.S. interest rate hikes ahead? Well, uh, interest rates are reasonably benign, that is correct. Uh, however, I think uh, a 25 basis point or even a 50 basis point rise in interest rates, if it comes, uh, is probably going to affect stocks more than it affects uh, real property. I think it'll have very little effect on the property sector per se. Uh, what it may do is slow transactions volumes down for a little while, but I think it's highly unlikely to reverse the trend of property prices in the residential sector. If we were going to go up uh, 500 basis points, that would be a different question, but I think mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an extremely remote possibility. Sure, okay, now in Hong Kong, uh, uh, in terms of uh, individual counters or stocks, where do you see value? Well, we've been very bullish for about 18 months on the big property developers, but quite frankly, these stocks have run very, very strongly indeed. They've outperformed the Hang Seng Index by uh, as much as 50, 60, 70 percent. Our stocks have doubled in some cases. So we've been looking more at the tier two property developers, slightly smaller companies, still very good quality companies, have good balance sheets, good property assets, and some of these companies are still growing at between 20 and 30 or 35 percent. Companies such as HKR International, Hong Kong Land, New Asia Realty and Trust. These are smaller companies, but uh, they haven't perhaps uh, experienced quite the same uplift as some of the bigger stocks. So we're suggesting people putting any new money to work might look at some of these companies. Hmm. Okay, now here in Singapore, uh, Peter, at a slightly uh, different point uh, in the cycle, uh, just starting a downturn, how bad is it going to get? As bad as Hong Kong, do you think? Uh, not at all in the residential market. I don't think we're going to see anything like uh, the fall that we saw in Hong Kong, which was about 20, 25 percent on average in residential. I don't think we're going to see that in Singapore. Firstly, it's not been such an overheated market as, as was the case in Hong Kong. And I think uh, the market generally in Singapore is a little more balanced. Uh, it is a little less uh, speculative. Uh, so I think the downside risk there is probably no more than 5 or 10 percent as mm -hmm. far as residential is concerned. On the commercial market, I think there is still upside potential here. I don't think we're going to see that market uh, turning down uh, in the near term. So we're still quite positive on the trends in the, uh, in the office market. Mm -hmm. Okay, Peter, a quick uh, last one now. Where do you see value in uh, Singapore property stocks? What would you be recommending? Well, we're rather cautious on the uh, prospects for the share prices of the major pr residential property developers. They tend to track the performance of residential prices. If residential prices are weak, the stocks do tend to underperform. So we're really focused on the bigger uh, property investment companies, the companies that are focused in the office market, companies like Straight Steamship Land, UOL, uh, and to some extent Singapore Land as well, where we do see upside uh, coming through over the next 12 months in office market rents and prices. Okay, commercial exposure then. Peter, we'll have to wrap up with you there. Good to talk to you. Thanks for uh, coming on to join us today. Thank you very much. That's Peter Churchhouse, Morgan Stanley Asia, joining us from our studios in Hong Kong.